this is a very impromptu video. Uh, this right here is a Clevo or something similar gaming netbook, notebook, computer, model number NA, uh, NA71EP. And I've been requested to take the bottom cover off so the owner can uh, do some modifications to it, so we can take the battery out, and I assume I'm going to take the keyboard screws out, which are thankfully, uh, the keyboard screws are pointed out, because that would suck if they weren't actually um, pointed out, so they, I've got to isolate those, because those are keyboard screws. I think the good thing with these machines is that you don't take the palm rest off. You instead, you just take the whole bottom uh, bottom shell off. But I think you also need to take the keyboard assembly off as well. I don't even know what those screws went to. I'm just going to assume this top half is for the normal piece, uh, normal screws, and then those two sitting in the lonely container for the keyboard. I am surprised that they trusted me, of all people. This is probably my first ever customer. I guess they just saw I like taking stuff apart. They said, hey, can you take this bottom cover off me? I need to take a Dremel to it, so uh, yeah. You can trust my delicate-ish hands. I suppose. Oh god, this is full of dust as well. This thing looks like it's been heavily used over the course of its lifetime. And, uh, well, it's still being used. I can't even tell which screws effectively go to what, because I believe this one at the very back here is smaller than the rest. Yeah, it is. Gotta remember that that little one goes here. Got three other screws here as well. A fat one and another mini one. I'll leave those three in their own category. Because they're all the same. Right. And another one here. I think that's all of them. Oh, there, there's another one right here, that's the middle screw. God damn it. That's also thankfully the same length. This thing also has a hard drive taped to the, uh, the lid. So I, super, I assume it's running some kind of a RAID array. Goodness, this thing is huge. I wouldn't be surprised if its screen is something of 20 inches, maybe even more than that. Uh, I had a. I think I have to poke the poke the keyboard out. But it's okay. I've got a special poker tool. Poke my face. I've got to be very careful one day in this, because the last thing I want to do is knacker the motherboard, or the keyboard. Um, mm, I hate doing this. I had like a special little wooden toothpick kind of. It was a, I think it was a matchstick that I used to pop the keyboard off. Well, maybe I don't even need to take the keyboard off, but I assume that there's screws under the keyboard that hold it on. Uh, or I could just run that through it, maybe. No. Huh. 
This is probably the first computer that's very... This has a Core i5 8th Gen i5 in it, spec-wise. So uh, that's all I know at the moment about it. It's got a Core i5 8th Gen, so this is quite fancy. It's not branded, it's a, just a generic clever machine. I think it was bought... it was... Yeah, I think it was like a custom built to order machine from PC built PC built specialists in the UK. That's that's where that came from. Okay, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to uh, come back when I find a tool that's uh, good enough. Okay, I found my little uh, matchstick. This is all. This is just a burned up matchstick head. Uh, so what I do. Just open the computer so the display's facing flat, hold my palm over this, and then just apply violent force onto the keyboard until it pops free. Like so. Now, I've just got to, uh... Oh, there we go. Just got to go along the edges, I assume. And this isn't any old keyboard, this is a RGB keyboard, so this has got extra ribbon cables I've got to be careful with. I mean, RGB is cool, kinda. I'm going to get lots of negative response when I've said that. But RGB is cool when you have it in the correct things. Such as, this is a computer designed for gaming, so it's perfect for this application. Okay, I don't know how, how well I can show this. But you have three cables down here. I think they're labelled. I think Clavo labelled that on their motherboard. Also, the motherboard part number is clearly visible once you remove the keyboard ribbon. So that is the ribbon for the keys. That is the ribbon for something or other. And this, I assume, is the ribbon for the LEDs. I don't like these type of tab connectors. Oh yes, I think they are labelled. So let's have a look. Here is the keyboard. You can see it's uh, slightly worn away, especially after the W, A, S, and D keys, because this has been used heavily. It's got two fans. The intake is through the keyboard. But if you look on the bottom, there's only one exhaust. This right here is just a blank. And that is the CPU. The GPU has all the airflow it can get, and the CPU has to suffocate. JKB... KB2... Oh, so that's like a second keyboard connector. We weren't using that. LED2 is for LEDs. And KB2, which is the big long connector, is for the keys. And this is the only sticker left on it. There's lots of other stickers, but they've obviously worn off with intense gameplay. Is, is that it? Is that... there's no screws under here? So I just... I... Oh God. I don't like that hard drive being mounted to the back like that. Um, yeah, I think it, now it's just a matter of peeling the bottom chassis off. Because there's no screws in there, so I guess I just gotta be violent, but careful. I think I'm gonna start on this side. Oh gosh, this thing has got this thing has ports for days. This is what I like to see in laptops. Lots of ports. This is quite thick. Very heavy. I like weight. Especially when it comes with a big chonkers like this laptop. So that's a bonus feature. Um, Come on, I got one tab. Maybe I can get the others if I try hard enough, but my nails don't like it. Who ever said that? Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Who ever said having long nails helps you open stuff? It doesn't help at all. Ignore them. Cut your nails. It looks nicer to people, which is what I will be doing very soon. And no, I wasn't forced to say that by some ominous figure in the doorway. No, this is my genuine point because. 
if your nails are worked too hard, they become floppy and effectively useless. So, I use plastic sponges. It's also less painful because if you cut, if you break a nail inside the computer, hoo -hoo, you're going to have a bad time. Oh, I don't like these plastic clips because they're a dubious quality. Okay, I've got the thing to flip up. There we go, detached. That's the inside. You can see there's a lot of dust over where that is. And we have barely got an opening. And yeah, quite disgusting. The fans. I swear I've cleaned this thing three times now. Um, oh, right, okay, we can see more of the specs. Aside from just the CPU, we have an A Data M.2 2280 SU 800NS 38 128GB. I think that's the boot drive. And this here is a 2.5 SATA SU. What's the capacity? 120GT ASU 650SS, wherever that comes from. It's probably also A Data. We have Corsair Vengeance DDR4 RAM. So that's cool, I suppose. Uh, I don't know, I assume it's got 16 gigs in it because this thing can play Cyberpunk 2077. Here's the fans, both of them are very, uh, very thin, thin bladed uh, centrifuge. Uh, no, yeah, centrifugal. No, they're axial fans. They're not squirrel cage blower like the Dell CPU fan. They're axial, kinda. This thing's full of dust. I'll give this thing a little clean down, but this is really all I needed to take off of the bottom cover. But yeah, that's the insides of this random gaming laptop. It also has another drive on the back. I don't know the capacity or the type, so and I'm not really uh, in the mood to peel it off. I don't even think I'm supposed to, so I'm just going to leave it alone. But yep, that is the specifications of this um, clever gaming laptop. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you have one of these machines, uh, take this as a tutorial, kind of, for how to take the bottom cover off. But yes, thank you for watching. Oh, cool, I have just noticed something um, with the cooling system on this computer. Uh, this has actually got <laughs> a really bad air practices, you can see on the inside here where some holes are, there is no actual through where this decorative vent has been placed, so uh, the owner and I have had to drill holes through, and then of course we got this, which is the GPU outlet. It's got two vents, but there are three, and it's being covered by this tape, so I have to say, if I, if I take this tape off, because he said he wants maximum cooling, he doesn't really can't really be asked with um, that it looks as long as it works, which is what I say. Who cares if it looks ugly just as long as it works? Okay, next step is cleaning up the holes that are already dusty. This has already got. Oh, geez, it's like smoke. It's that fine. It's probably be best if you guys have. Um, a fan, or just a sitting in a well ventilated room. I, for one, have neither. So I'm putting my life on the line here. Doing stuff I like. Battery is also a tad dusty, but we'll go over that. So, that's the South Bridge ship, I think. Oh, good god. I don't give a damn if my room gets dusty, it's dusty enough as it is. Everyone says, oh, your room smells. That's not my fault. Just gonna clean the damn thing. I don't know how long this computer will last for, because this thing probably looks like it's from 2000 and 2012. Well, it has an 8th gen i5, and it's soldered. This is the CPU. This is the GPU, I think. Or is this the CPU? How do you No, that's the CPU and this is the GPU, which makes sense because this chip is huge and this chip is tiny. The GPU obviously has to be so big so it can fit all the cores inside. I think I may have to take this fan off. And I genuinely don't want to do that. 
but I haven't got a choice. Fingers crossed this fan comes out without me having to take the heat sink off, because if I take that off then it's game over. No, it doesn't come off. Okay. That was a horrible experiment gone wrong. Well, I guess having a dusty gaming laptop is better than having a cracked PCH. Am I right? Or am I right? I think I'm right. But anyway, this is just gonna have to get right. Oh my god. I hope that was the sound of my fingers dragging across the blades and not the bearings being all squeaky. I do hope that squeaking is definitely not fan bearings. Okay, these blades will never be perfect. They're clean enough. Time to go to the other fan. Let's plug this fan in, obviously, because this one's quite important. The GPU fan. I don't even know if this uh, method will uh, work. But I have the battery, so I don't need to plug my power supply in. This is very interesting, I've never seen a computer take two hard drives. Okay, that's a slight lie. My Toshiba Satellite A300 can take two drives. It might even take three if I take the CD-ROM out. Put a third drive in there. That'd be a cool investment idea. Fans clean, cover clean, ready. Now we just, um... We just put this cover back on. Yeah. Click it all back down. Make sure it's nice and sturdy. Be careful I'm not jiggling the hard drive on the screen too much. screw went here, this slightly fat screw went here, and this little screw went right at the back, right over here. Next, what we do, uh, we have these, which are basically all the case screws, we make sure that we put those where they belong. And you're probably thinking, hang on, you're an idiot. Why haven't you tested the computer before you put the bottom cover back on? To which I will reply with YOLO. I'm going to make sure I leave the keyboard screws out so that I don't you know, screw anything in there by accident. Because the LCD is directly below those holes. If I poke something sharp, like a screw through it, then I'm going to pierce the LCD and, uh, well, both the owner and I will have a very bad day. Like I said, this is my first customer. So. Fingers crossed this goes well. And I maybe have some good reviews. Not like reviews exist on my end anyway. I think I have three screws left, which I assume are all the ones up at the top here. This is a very well built computer, despite the soldered in CPU. I think that I would probably get away with owning one of these myself if my, well, my ThinkPad has broken. So yeah, I will be considering one of these clever machines. But at the same time, I'm also considering a Lenovo ThinkPad. I don't know, something a friend recommended to me. It was a ThinkPad that AI could take the external CD drive out and perform like a mod for like an external one, like but a CD drive. 
and then you can put hard drive where the CD drive went, the main hard drive, and then an M.2 where the broadband module is supposed to go, because apparently it's an M.2 slot. That will be a very interesting experiment. So, ah, oh, that's the problem when you have your display um, outlets with the fan directly over the screen. Oh, that is utter grotesque. That is disgusting. Okay, hang on, let me just clean this off. Just... This doesn't need to take long, because I already detailed the display last time I had this open. And yeah, I never felt to film it. So, was it a machine? Was it this one? I think it was something else. I can't remember. It was a computer similar, but I think it was like a Dell or something. Don't know. It was ages ago. This is a completely different machine. Trust me. Yeah. Just gotta go over the truck pad and everything. Everyone's probably thinking, no, you're, well, you're ruining a perfectly good uh, uh, you have a paintbrush. No, no, no. These weren't perfectly good. These were like two quid off wish. Some of the bristles are going to fall out as well. And that's not because of my rigorous cleaning. Okay, here we go. RGB keyboard again. Model number uh, CVM15F2600J430M, revision 1, language UK. Obviously, if this was a US keyboard, I would have thrown it straight out the window. Oh wait, I can't say that, because this Dell next to me has the US keyboard. The CSX was never sold to the UK market, so that was actually an import from the States. Which is interesting, because it did come with a power supply and a whole crap ton of ex uh, accessories. Uh, the power supply was the only thing I had to throw away. Um, and the old motherboard, because the motherboard had cooked itself. Um, yeah, I hate plugging keyboards back in. If any person who works on laptops knows this, with Windows machines, Mac users... Mac users kind of get that off with this. But... <clears throat> Trying to remove and reinsert keyboards for laptops is an absolute utter nightmare. Oh wow, I didn't even plug it in. I freaking hate these. I hate the. I prefer the ones that, f you know, flick up. There we go, that is in. Oh, I'm gonna kink the connector. Okay, then that's the RGB. I think I know that one of these cables goes to the numpad, because this is a 104 key keyboard. And very few of my laptops have the numpad as part of the keyboard. So, well, this isn't actually mine, but it might be one day when someone finally spills coke on it or something. Because I know if the CPU is fried, then a new motherboard will be pretty pricey, because I don't think I can get an 8th gen i5. It's an i5 and not an i7. Lame. Peasants. Right, I suppose I can try and test the keyboard out. I didn't even put that in properly. Okay, give me a sec. I'll get back once I put the keyboard in. Okay, um, I put the keyboard back in and I had to do this twice because the little leg kept popping out. So that's kind of irritating. But I was going to say, who in their right mind thought that was a good idea? Who the hell thought we should have a keyboard that's so difficult to take off? But make it so it can be taken off. I almost broke the F6 key then. That's in. 
Okay. Flip over. Let me put the two screws back in to make sure I don't have to endure that nightmare ever again. That's in. Got a dusty battery. Um, if you want to know the power consumption of this machine, I don't know. But if you want to know the milliamp hours, it's uh, fun. 5,300 milliamp hour, 12.9 DC, 11.1 volts, 6.2 WH, whatever the hell that means. Is that watts? Is that how Chinese people smell, spell watts? Not trying to be racist or anything. Or I think that was just a spelling mistake. Uh, locked. Hang on, where's the lock? There we go. Locked and locked. Alright, let's give it a test. Um, I can't show much of the screen for too long, but I can show you the BIOS screen, I guess. Oh, we've got a... There you go. I like that keyboard already. Spam F2. There we go. That's our BIOS screen. Which fan is spinning? I can't tell, it sounds like none of them are spinning. Let's have a look. No fan is spinning, so this is an absolutely silent computer for the time being, which is either a really good thing or a really bad thing. So it does show that SATA port 1 and then SATA port 4? Wait a minute. Don't tell me this has like two other SATA ports, because that would be really cool. Uh, 16 megabytes of DDR4, and okay, so that's 16 gigabytes of RAM effectively. Uh, has a 2.30 gigahertz i5-8300H, mobile. Such as an AHCI, Windows Boot Manager, yeah, we're going to leave all of that untouched. Keyboard lights up, quit without saving, yes, because I didn't change anything. And yep, there's the uh, PC Build Specialist logo on boot, booting Windows 10. And yeah, so far it looks okay. The keyboard does actually work. The lights work. Does the num key work? That is the that is that is a good point. We shall test. I'm not going to show the test obviously because it does involve the user's login screen. Okay, arrow keys work, yeah, it works. And no P is correct. As for the fans, I swear they're supposed to turn on. Yeah, I swear this is supposed to... Surely the fans should immediately start up on boot. Does this only work when the fan is plugged in? I did plug the fans back in, didn't I? Hmm. Well, for now, um, that's I've done the most stuff. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this impromptu clip of me doing some repair. Thank you for watching. Turns out all is not lost. I have a second job, which is the uh, owner's fan pad. Um, it just needs a light dust off, uh, according to him. Uh, so I'm going to try and do that, which is easier said than done. Because it is a matter of fact of just going through all the holes. Yeah. I wonder if there's anything under these holes, maybe? No, this thing seems... 
So this thing seems mostly press fit together, which is uh, troublesome. Yeah, I'm just going to need mostly just launching through the little holes. I guess I could power it up for a sec, because it looks like it's got an LED fan in it. Let's have a look. I have a power lead down here somewhere. This is micro. Oh, that's micro USB, not USB-C. Okay. Micro USB... apparently USB-C isn't the future, then. If so much still uses the old way of doing things. Where the hell did I put it? I had a Samsung charger always on standby for in case I needed it, but apparently it's gone walkies. There it is. It is. It's present, it's just hidden somewhere. I think this came from a Galaxy Tab 4. Okay. Oh, there we go. It has. It's got a little blue fan in it. Or, actually, I shouldn't really say... Well, I thought this thing was an absolute jet engine. In fact, this might help move the dust around as we launch it out the holes. Now, I know where to look. Because... Basically, wherever you can't see directly through is clogged. Uh, cleaning inside the machine, however, is going to be very difficult. Because I don't know exactly how this is put together. I think it's just press fit together, and in order to clean it, I'd probably have to yank quite a few screw holes out. I'd probably risk breaking it, so I don't think I'll be able to try. I think as long as I just at least clear the opening over the main fan, which there's only one fan in here, very big. Uh, I think this is a 200mm, assuming Cooler Master fan. Of course, Cooler Master would put their own products in, say Noctua built a laptop cooling pad, they put Noctua fans in it. And Targus, they'll just put whatever fans you can buy off the shelf at CEX or some other place that sells cheap fans, and then they'll just bung it in a plastic, cheap plastic case and mark it to you for £200. Okay, maybe not that much, but like, still, 30 quid is a lot for a laptop pad that doesn't last very long. Very badly built, and I'm kind of happy I got rid of it. I have another one. It's a Klim. I don't know if Klim is a off-ball brand or not. Uh, uh, I've lost mine. It's under my bed somewhere. And mine has four light-up LED fans. So, yay. Props to RGB, kinda. Again, I'm going to be hated for saying I like RGB, but hey, my opinion. The same as I can say I hate dogs, but I don't. I don't actually. I like dogs. Dogs are very cute. But it's yeah, just the same as saying something like that. If I can say I like RGB and not get cancelled for it, then so be it. Besides, I plan to build an RGB computer, or a desktop computer from two th from the early 2000s with 2000s RGB. So it's going to have cold cathode fluorescent lamps and LED bits and bobs. And I'm going to do the same with a laptop, only with a cooling pad and some more cool things. That looks pretty good, don't you think? Of course you won't be able to see it very well. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh. Gross. I now feel really dirty. I, I genuinely feel horrible. has a really nice long coast down, which is what I like to see. 
If the fan stops quickly, it means the bear at the moment has had it. Well, not all the time. Sometimes quick stopping fans have different bearing styles, so that they stop quicker. It's not like it matters, because a lot of those are found inside PCs where no one really cares, unless they've got a glass panel to it. And someone who's really salty would say, Oh, your fan stops really quickly, mate. Is it a problem? No. Um, yeah, so again, this is mostly just going to be me poking things through a hole and spinning the brush. Cool. So I think I'll stop here and say thank you for watching the second part to the gaming computer um, cooling mod. Yes, thanks for watching. Um, new, expect new videos coming out soon. I have the Toshiba combination failure. Yes, I'm going to reveal the, the results of the video, and yes, I did technically do the whole thing for nothing. But it's okay, because I would have taken the RAM out of the other one anyway. And uh, that Toshiba will be put on eBay for, let's say, around 30 quid, because it works. 30 quid without a power supply seems reasonable. We'll be running something. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.